This is the Google Pixel 4a. The cheapest phone that Google offers and I've been daily driving it for about a month now. So it's finally time for my full review which includes my experiences with it, the bad side, the good and maybe let you decide if you should pick it up right now in 2021 or not, keeping in mind it was released back in August last year. Or maybe I should just say it right away. It's a worthy pick even in 2021 so if you wanna know why that is, then stick around, drop a like, this is Philip's future and let's jump right into the video. The unboxing experience is quite okay, at least you get an 18 watts power adapter in the box that supports fast charging. Alongside that you get your phone of course, some paperwork, a SIM ejector tool, a USB-C to C cable, and an OTG adapter for data transfer from your old phone. Nothing special. Well, this is a small phone, it's compact, fits in my palm pretty well. I can easily reach the top of the screen with just a single hand. And it's also so light at only 143 grams, so if you're coming from a heavier phone, you'll definitely feel a huge weight difference. The other thing you'll notice is this smooth matte texture on the back of the phone. It's plastic and that contributes to that $349 price tag, but don't let that fool you because it's sturdy and well built. The back of this phone is simple, minimal, which I personally like. Just a subtle Google logo at the bottom and a small camera bump at the top. There's also a fingerprint scanner that blends into the rest of the back panel and it's so fast in recognizing my fingerprint every time. It's however a subtle dent on the back that requires some getting used to before mastering its position. There's a headphone jack on the top side, a jewel in 2021, and the most beautiful thing about this phone has to be that colored power button which is really clicky like the rest of the volume buttons as well. On the bottom side you get a USB-C port, a single firing speaker, and what seems to be a microphone. That speaker pairs with the earpiece to create a stereo sound effect. And just for context, which is totally unfair by the way, I've used phones with some of the best if not the best stereo speakers like the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the OnePlus 8 Pro, and this feels just a little bit short of bass because of that weaker earpiece sound that gets tinny at full volumes. I'd give it a 7 out of 10 which is more than enough not forgetting the price and the compact size of this phone. On the front is where things get interesting in a good way though. The display goes from edge to edge which is not what we know about older Google Pixels. It's a beautiful display and that's one of the reasons I considered before picking it up other than the fact that the bottom bezel is slightly wider than the rest of the bezels. It's a 5.81 inch 1080p OLED display, which might feel small at first, but that is so enough for most things, at least for me. I found myself in situations under direct sunlight and this display is still viewable and usable with no problems at all. And it being an OLED panel means you get always on display, which I have running all day long with just a small impact on battery life that I can totally live with. Another feature of the Pixel 4a I enjoy using the most is now playing that shows you what songs are playing in the background and all this works even if you're offline. On the app you can easily hop onto the full song to your favorite music streaming service which is so convenient. The only downside here is that this is a 60Hz panel so no smooth scrolling but hear me out. It's not that terrible as people make it to be. The point is you get used to it and for me I wish it had at least 90Hz but if you really want that then you have to go with the Pixel 5 which is more expensive. Enough of the hardware talks. But how does it perform in real life? Well, first of all, I'm on Android 12 Beta. Advantages of getting a Google Pixel phone, meaning you get software updates as quickly as possible. Which is another reason why I picked this phone other than the stock Android experience that is simple and I like it. So performance might occasionally have hiccups and that's to be accepted until all the bugs have been squashed out. And by the way, I have a full video highlighting under 12 features. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link down below. Generally, while I was on stable under 11, performance was great. Six gigs of RAM is enough for most tasks, but heavy apps and games do not stay open in background for long. So you have to wait for it to relaunch sometimes. The Pixel 4a uses an older UFS 2.1 technology powered by a Snapdragon 735G to again keep that price down, but I'll say it again. 
performance on this phone is okay for the most part. Just not flagship level. And talking of games, I play Call of Duty Mobile intensively and I'll say the gaming experience is just fine. Not the best out there, no 90 FPS here, and sometimes I experience dropped frames, but overall, heavy games are very well playable, just with a few starters if you max out the settings. And with 6 gigs of RAM, this phone is going to edge well for more years to come. Not forgetting the Pixel 4 will receive updates, both security and major updates until August 2023. There are a lot of Pixel exclusive features that are essential to me, like live caption, even when you are offline, quickly switching to selfie camera by doing this, and my favorite which is Google Lens integration in almost everywhere in the operating system. Now it's easier to copy and paste text from pages or even images right from the recent screen, which is really handy. Just for context, the main 12.2 megapixel sensor found on the high-end Pixel 5 is the same sensor here, which means pictures coming out of the two phone's main sensors might actually be similar in some ways. What's important is that the Pixel 4s camera is one of the best phone cameras I've used so far. Color reproduction is excellent, more so in skin tones, it's natural, what you see is what you get and no extra filters slapped on pictures like other manufacturers tend to do, and I really appreciate that. Pictures come out sharp in well-lit areas, dynamic range is also on point. However, in darker environments, pictures come out of the camera soft and grainy, but Google's night sights come to the rescue and it makes it a little bit usable, but in some cases you have to wait for about 5 seconds or even more for HDR and night sight photos to process. There is only a single lens here at the back, no ultra wide, which is found on the Pixel 4, A5G and the Pixel 5, so if that's a must feature for you, then you're not getting that here. Portrait mode is also available for both the 8 megapixel selfie camera and the main camera, and I must say that Google's AI is king in detecting what to blur and what to keep sharp. Even after you've captured a photo, you can still edit the blur intensity in Google Photo, which is a handy feature to have. Video is also okay, there are some stabilization modes that really get the job done. The rear camera maxes out at 4K 30fps, no 60 frames per second recording here due to chipset limitations. With my experience, I have to give the Pixel 4S camera quality a whopping 9 out of 10, just minus 1 for the noisy clay-like photos and videos in the dark. The Pixel 4a packs a 3140mAh battery, don't let that number fool you though because battery life on this small boy is excellent. Unfortunately for some unknown reasons, Google decided to omit screen on time stats on Android 12, so I can't quote that but just to level with you, I let my phone charge overnight from about 12am, don't worry I got adaptive charging turned on, and once I pick it up in the morning, it lasts through the whole day. Once in a while I might be forced to charge it up in the afternoon though when I use the camera a lot. And with that 18 watts fast charger included in the box, it takes just about one and a half hours to juice it up, which is not that bad. Despite the Pixel 4a being a great phone for the most part, there are some things that I don't like about it. For instance, network receptions drops quickly inside buildings. But this actually happens in specific spots, which might just have poor network connectivity, but it bugs me. No official IP rating here, so be careful not to drop it in liquids. Sounds get teeny at maximum volumes. Slightly slower image processing in the camera and some apps occasionally relaunches when I need them the most. Other than that, it's a great phone. If you're in that budget, I'd say grab one. It's totally worth it unless you want a really sturdy build or 5G that are present in the more expensive Pixel 4a 5G or the 5. But here you get faster updates, haptics are also great on this phone, camera is excellent and battery life is also great. And that's the Pixel 4a in a nutshell. By the way, which phone are you using right now? Let me know down in the comment sections and let's have a chat. That's it guys, this was a long one and if you're still here that means you're enjoying this video. And while you're at it please drop a like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Anyway goodbye and most of all, stay
staying safe.